offense to Patty Judge, to Sally Peterson, to Art New, or even Terry Branstead or Kim Reynolds, and no offense to their families or to the position of lieutenant governor, but when have we talked about a lieutenant governor as we have talked lately after Adam Gregg resigned immediately as Iowa's lieutenant governor? Hi, and welcome to Inside Iowa Politics. I'm Dave Price. These are really outstanding individuals. Greg decided that seven years in the position was enough. And as the new president and CEO of the Iowa Bankers Association, he gets to see his family a lot more and make a lot more money. Some people were kind of shocked when this all went public. His boss, Iowa's Governor Kim Reynolds, said that she found out four days before this all went public. I became aware of it last Friday. He sat down and visited and said that this opportunity had been presented for him. And, uh, you know, I support his decision, uh, you know, to focus on family. This is a very demanding job and it really requires a lot of sacrifices. And so, you know, I understand him wanting to spend more time with his family. Uh, that makes a, a lot of sense. And so I absolutely support him and his decision and what he's going to do. You know, when you think about it, family's so important to me. We talk about it all the time. I, I say I'm a better governor when I get to spend time with my family and my grandkids. And it's just a grueling uh, a schedule. And so, um, you know, we want to make sure that he has the opportunity to um, really focus on his family, and, and he thought that this private sector job would allow him to do that. Getting India to buy more pork and other Iowa products could be on the wish list when the governor heads to India Tuesday for a 10-day trade mission. Now, it's hard to see her announcing her new lieutenant governor choice when she's overseas, but she also told us it's not practical to announce one before she gets on that plane. After all, it would only be a week after Greg resigned. Oh, no, no, that's too fast. I want to make sure that I take the time and get the right person there. You know, we have a couple people in mind, but we want to make sure that we, you know, take a look at, you know, who that might be and what we want them to focus on. Reynolds served for six years as lieutenant governor before ascending to governor when Terry Branstad resigned to become U.S. ambassador to China. The governor was asked whether she expected Adam Gregg to replace her when she retired one day. It's always the assumption that when you bring in a lieutenant governor, they are going to be ready and willing to take that next step uh, to serve as governor. But there's never any guarantees, you know, that that's going to be the process. And ultimately, it'll be the voters of Iowa that will decide who the next governor is going to be. So, um, but again, I just, I appreciate his service uh, to the citizens of Iowa. I appreciated him stepping in and serving in this capacity. He's been a great partner. He's been a great team member. And I just appreciate that so much. But I also can completely, completely understand him and Carrie wanting to focus on their family and maybe stepping into a private um, private sector position will really provide, I think, the balance that he's looking for to not only continue to give back, but to continue to really be there for softball games and for activities and to be home at night and not on the road. It's, it is a tremendous sacrifice. And you know, we've had a tough seven years. It's not been easy. We've done a derecho. We started with flooding and tornadoes, and then we moved into COVID, and then we moved into a derecho. Then we went back and did a few more tornadoes, a few more flooding. I mean, it's 24-7 and nonstop. And so um, I have a lot of respect for somebody that wants to step back and really focus uh, on their family. Uh, and just opportunities like this don't come up that often. And so he just took all of that into account and made a decision uh, for his family. And so I appreciate that. Okay, so what about her new lieutenant governor? Does she expect that this person will replace her, regardless of whether she retires after 2026 or potentially runs for another term and then would retire after 2030? Well, you know, listen, I am focused on a next, this next election that's coming up way too soon. Uh, that's two years away. Uh, there's, I'm not going to make an announcement today. Uh, but, but truly, 
uh, this is probably the most important election of my lifetime, and America's in trouble, and we need to change leadership at the top. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to help get uh, President Trump, former President Trump, elected again so we can get this country back on track. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we have an all-Republican delegation, federal delegation, so that he has a team in place to really get this country back on track. And so my focus is governing for the state of Iowa, following through on the programs that we're working on, uh, looking for opportunities to bring new investment to the state, to provide new markets for our farmers and for our businesses, the you know, third largest economy in the world. And going to India is a tremendous opportunity for our state and for our, um, ag our commodity groups, um, just tremendous opportunity. Uh, and then, uh, again, going to do everything I can to make sure that we get the results that we're looking for this next election cycle. It's still a little different to hear her talk about Donald Trump now versus how she talked about him before the Iowa caucuses when she was trying to stop Trump and get Florida Governor Ron DeSantis elected as the party's nominee. Now the Inside Iowa Politics Final Five and the governor's decision to pick a new lieutenant governor. Number one, scandal. When Adam Gregg announced that he was quitting immediately as lieutenant governor to spend more time with family, I immediately heard from people who insisted there had to be a big scandal. Then about an hour later, we found out that Gregg had a new job and he would head the Iowa Bankers Association. Number two, the number two, per state code, when Iowa does not have a lieutenant governor, then the Senate president would be next in the line of succession. If something happened to the governor, in this case, it's Amy Sinclair of Allerton. I wonder if we should also keep her in mind in a potential short list of choices for a lieutenant governor for Kim Reynolds. Number three, gender balance. For the last couple of decades, we've had a mix at the top. If there's been a male governor, there's been a female governor, and it was flipped the other way when Kim Reynolds took over as governor. Some people assume it'll stay that way, but I wonder if that's not the right way to think about this. Who's to say that Kim Reynolds would not pick a woman to serve as her lieutenant governor. I think that might be something to keep an eye on. Number four, going upstairs. Kim Reynolds was a state senator before becoming lieutenant governor and then governor. Could she also look one floor up from her office at the state capitol, look inside the legislature, either the House or the Senate, for somebody to serve as her lieutenant governor? And again, potentially a woman, something also to watch. Finally, number five, Greg's role. Adam Gregg as lieutenant governor would sometimes be off in the background, would stand behind the governor, not get to speak at certain events. Sometimes he held public events on his own across the state, but those events were not included in the administration's public schedule like the governor's events were. It'll be interesting to see the dynamics of the next lieutenant governor and the governor and what that relationship will be, what kind of role this new lieutenant governor will be. That's it this week for Inside Iowa Politics. We'll see you next time.